Welcome to ThinkCast. I'm Casey Panetta. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Helen Poitavon, VP Analyst and Content Lead for the main keynote at this year's IT Symposium Expo. We'll learn a little bit about how the team selects the theme for the year, what she wants CIOs to take away from the keynote, and how the data all comes together. We'll also get a behind-the-scenes look at the biggest challenges of putting together a keynote of this size and what goes into the creation process. Hi, Helen. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I'm really interested to talk about this. I've been attending the Gartner keynotes for, I think this will be my sixth year, and I love a little behind-the-scenes peek. So I want to start off by talking about your specific role in creating the keynote, because if people were able to listen to it or uh, have attended you know, symposium in the past, they might realize that you're not actually the one on stage who is presenting this, but you've been absolutely integral in creating it. So how does that work? Yeah, so how we have it set up, my, my role is... Uh... The content lead. So I'm leading the entire team that's coming together with what the story is, writing it, chasing the examples, looking for the data sources, bringing that whole concept together, um, thinking about how we want to bring the story to life uh, for the keynote. So the main person kind of behind the scenes, bringing that story together, and then really helping each of the speakers take that story into their own words to bring it to stage, bring it to life for audience. And is this your first year doing this or how many years have you been involved in this? So it's my second year as the lead. So my first year was a fun one, the first year in a pandemic um, with lockdown and our first ever virtual uh, keynote with with Composable Business. But I actually um, started a couple of years before that participating in the keynote process as a writer, really contributing to the storyline um, and just started leading it. Um, so this is year two. Oh, so the first virtual was also your first keynote that you were leading. That's fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so a lot of new things, I think, uh, navigating. At, and I think what was cool about it is we were navigating what all of our customers were navigating and what advice we were giving is how to respond and put something together when your world is kind of turned upside down and you need to operate in a completely different way. So going virtual was was definitely a, a challenge for us, just like for everybody else. And I think that was part of the magic of bringing that story to people is that that shared experience too. Yeah, absolutely. I loved last year's and I was super impressed that you were able to kind of pull together a cohesive, a very cohesive keynote in a time that everyone had so many questions and was trying to figure so many things out. And so that brings me to the keynotes always have obviously an overarching theme, but how did you select one for this year? Well, how we do that is, I mean, we're always, we always have a pulse on where clients are, where, where, and where people more broadly in the market are in terms of what they're thinking about, what questions they're asking, what kind of advice they need, what's coming next for them, where they may have some blind spots, where some advice could help them navigate those next steps forward. And so it's really kind of bubbling up all of these insights together and really thinking about a core question around what is it that people really need to know this year in this time period with whatever is going on for, for all of them. And I mean, we're, we're all each facing our, our own individual challenges and ways forward as organizations, as leaders, as, as everything. So I think that the theme really bubbles up out of all of those conversations and really thinking about what is it now that's going to resonate and help lead people forward in the couple, two to three to maybe five years to come that can really jog their thinking, get them thinking about things a bit differently and and move forward in, in a positive way. So now that we've given that sort of tantalizing intro into how we pick the themes, what were this year's themes? So this year, we really felt like everybody's asking where next or even what's next. Like what? I mean, we've, we've kind of figured out how to go remote. We've kind of figured out how to manage hybrid work. But we know that's not the end of the conversation. There are so many other things that need to happen. So many other changes, questions of whether we go back to how things were or how things will be going forward. And it creates a context in which you're operating where you really have to think about where next? How are you going to lead in this world? And a big part of that question, we chose to use where instead of what's next because the where of so many things changed. Where we work changed. Where we buy goods and services. Where we eat. Where our kids go to school if we have children who are school, school aged. 
and 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 even where we go at the weekend if we're going anywhere especially through lockdown which has been on and off for for quite some time so it just felt like the question of that moment is where next and needing to respond to it but with optimism a very optimistic mood as well in terms of how can we tap into this kind of giant invitation card we have where I mean, digital is everywhere. If we were operating or doing anything through this time period, it's through digital channels that becomes the default. So it's, especially for technology executives, how do we tap into that? How do we go after value in new ways? And where next? So that's kind of the, the theme for this year's keynote. And as everything with Gartner is, it's very data heavy. And where does all this data come from? I was just listening to it and it pulls from a lot of or what appears to be a lot of different sources. So how do you select kind of which data pieces to use and how do they all roll up into the creation of the the theme of where next? Well, data informs your thinking because it gives you a sense of what's going on in the world and how you need to think about the world and how we can understand also people's context. So one example is we take that starting point of hybrid work. And because so many of our customers were asking where next for work, like where are we going to be working and what about all this flexibility that people want? And maybe we want it, maybe we don't. All these questions bubbling up. So we, we, we went out and collected a lot of insights and answers to questions from employees around the world, around their preferences, around their thoughts, but also leaders around what they were thinking. And being able to highlight some of the insights from that, it, it not only informed the kind of questions that we were asking and the story we were telling, but became a, an essential part of that story to really highlight where the changes are. And beyond hybrid, understanding that tech talent is especially mobile right now and being able to see in the data how much of an increase there is of, of IT talent today thinking about quitting their jobs. All of that, I mean, it just comes to support the story we're telling and the criticality of answering that question, where next? I want to pause quickly to invite our listeners to learn how to create an action plan to master business composability. The 2022 CIO Agenda analyzes data from more than 2,300 CIOs and technology executives to figure out how organizations developed high business composability and pushed ahead of their peers while creating an organization designed to deal with today's volatility. Download the ebook in the show notes. Just to hop back to the theme specifically, Symposium has, I wouldn't even want to venture a guess at how many sessions there are, but there's a lot. And they run the gamut from sort of every topic an IT executive could be interested in. But there is one thing, and these themes from the keynote usually sort of percolate throughout the other sessions. So how does this theme apply across into more niche areas? Well, part of our answer to where next is reaching beyond. And reaching beyond is really taking and, and looking at the expansive role technology has to inform where it is that we're going and how we can tap into value sources differently. So all of our insights around top technology trends, around top strategic technologies and predicts, all of that kind of informs that forward-looking view and is really connected. But as I mentioned, I mean, we're talking about hybrid work, the, the, the challenges around finding IT talent, all of these kinds of questions. The future of work theme is also something that's just been so so top of mind and continues to be top of mind to really move forward in a positive way and, and know that what we're doing around hybrid will work for us. And so future of work kind of themes and what people are looking for in the workplace and how to connect with people, all of that comes into follow-up sessions that go into more detail on them. So the keynote really tells its own story, but it also points to all of these threads that you can kind of follow down to get into more detail, to get even more insight around what it is you could do and how you could act on these and what it means for your organization. Yeah, that's one of the parts I think I, I love about Symposium the most because I always obviously attend the keynote and then I listen to a lot of different sessions. And it's kind of like the light bulb clicking on when you realize how that overarching theme mm -hmm. applies to whatever session you're sitting into. It's always like a really nice moment. And we've been really purposeful this year. So we'll be advertising specific sessions as being really aligned to the keynote to allow attendees to kind of follow up on those things and go a little bit more in depth on those topics that caught their interest in the keynote and where they were really curious to know more and, and get more in-depth insight. 
So let's talk a little bit more. I know you mentioned that last year was your first year leading it. Obviously, last year had extremely unique (laughs) challenges. Um, What is the biggest challenge that you ran into this year? I think the biggest challenge this year really was the continued uncertainty um, that we're all facing. And so we were really hoping to continue to to be able to go live in many of our regions. I made that decision that really from our customers' perspective, so the attendees who would want to be there on site, the number of people we also have traveling internationally. A lot of these are, are quite large um, events with people needing to cross borders to come and attend and, and everything. And we made that decision to go virtual. And that shift was in time, but really kind of pulling it together and saying, oh, no, we're not going to be able to make it fully on stage this year. We're really going to go virtual and follow along with that broader strategy, I think, raised that additional challenge. We learned so much from it last year in terms of reaching audiences virtually, but it it is a different way of interacting. And so there there was some kind of moments there to uh, to kind of bring that together and get ourselves turned around to really focus on, in on just that virtual experience. I think it's probably worth noting at this point that the keynote is is months in the making. When do you guys actually start planning it? So we kicked off ideation January, March, and then really brought the team together to to really kick it off April and May. So yeah, it is it is a month in the making bit of content to really get to that story that grabs the audience that they feel connected to and helps propel them forward. We're going to take a quick break to talk briefly about the Gartner Top Strategic Technology Trends for 2022. From generative AI to cybersecurity mesh, these technology trends need to be on your radar for planning. Learn more and download the ebook at the link in the show notes. Last year, the theme was business composability. How do the keynotes change year over year? And are they connected? Is it like if you went back a couple of years, would it be one giant overarching story or are they more sort of discreet? There's a lot of continuity uh, year over year because we live in a time where, yes, things do change very quickly year to year, but things also kind of continue over time being a being a point of concern. So there are elements that you you're able to call back to. So this year we we do call back to the those composable applications and point to those moments of composability even if we don't call them out that we that we talked about um, in last year's keynote. And and it really drives forward our CIO agenda conversations this year too, which are around business composability and what that means and, and how organizations are taking that on. So I would say there's a lot of continuity, if not always explicit continuity, because you also don't want to sound like you're telling the same story every single year. But there's a lot that you can recognize because you also want to find people where they are, what they can attach to, to help them make that next step for themselves. And we've got a broad audience. We've got those who are way out on the front lines or, or in the front cutting edge of technology innovation and driving things forward. And then those that are more in the mainstream who, who are kind of looking at those stories and feel, feeling like they're so outside of what they could even imagine um, that they're not ready for it. So it's how do you bring something forward so that each attendee can find something in it for themselves and move forward while at the same time really driving forward an exciting story and, and uh, something that gets people excited about where next, about where they're going, about what they can do. Well, you very nicely brought me to my next question, which is what do you want people to take away from this year's keynote? Well, the core question in this year's keynote is where next? And if I'm cheeky, the the simplest answer to that is anywhere, everywhere, and beyond. But if you dive into that a little bit, it is more around as a CIO and IT executive or technology executive, how do you lead anywhere and empower anywhere? Knowing that IT and technology is not just part of IT anymore. It's really across the enterprise. And then when you're wanting to deliver this value in this ever-changing world, we've been talking about the uncertainty and needing to pivot and change. I mean, we're not alone in this. um, And you can't do that alone. So it is nurturing those connections everywhere to tap into those groups of partners and ecosystems and and other players that help us help us move forward. We're we're doing that collectively with others. And then really reaching beyond tapping into that idea of couldn't we do something bigger, better? Um, couldn't we use technology in a new way to go after value? Couldn't we 
even go after world-class problems or, or bigger challenges. So tapping into that inspiration of where and how you could be leading your organization forward to tackle these really big problems and use technology to do it. So lead anywhere, nurture connections everywhere, and reach beyond. I think this has been a really interesting insight into sort of a little behind the scenes and a little bit about this year's keynote and a little bit about Sim this year. So do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, I think part of what you do when you consume a keynote or you look into these ideas is you are looking for those new insights, that new new way of thinking, something that jogs you out of your daily uh, set of ways of looking at the world. Um, so, so it does kind of lift you up out of that. But it's also giving you practical advice of when you look at things differently, when you look at where things are happening and where they could happen differently, new opportunities emerge. So we hope that it really inspires people to take that next step to really think about where they are as a leader, where they are in their connections with others, and where they're going to change the world, where they're going to bring value. And, and hopefully they're inspired to bring that forward and take decisive action in their context and even inspire their teams based on what they heard and learned. This has been so interesting, especially for someone who's sat in the audience and watched the virtual last year. So thank you so much for joining us, Helen. So happy to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Thinkcast is a production of Gartner. This podcast may not be reproduced or distributed in any form without Gartner's permission. It consists of the opinions of Gartner's research organization, which should not be construed as statements of fact. Content provided by other speakers is expressly the views of the speaker and or their organization. While the information contained in this podcast has been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, Gartner disclaims all warranties as to the accuracy, completedness, or adequacy of such information. Although Gartner Research may address legal and financial issues, Gartner does not provide legal or investment advice and its research should not be construed or used as such. You can learn more at www.gartner.com.